Howdy folks, this is Checkers back again with Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, and we have just finished character creation. We've come out on our ship here, and DR here has told us to check this wardrobe for some items, so we will unpause and see that they gave us some very nice things. Alright, now make some use of it. Okay, equipping items. And this is interesting. Oh, very nice. If you click on an item in your inventory to pick it up, you can place it in any highlighted slot to equip it. You can also double click items to automatically equip them. Complete with a, an animated demonstration. Very cool. Most games don't pay that much attention to their tutorial, which is a shame. Well, let's start right out with our lovely morning star. We can put our flail in our second slot here. Male armor over simple clothing. What else do we have here? We have defiant apparel, but I don't think we can wear that because we are Moon godlike. Combat only. A pet. Oh, look at that. There is a pet slot. And beakhead. Alright, so let's close the this up. Dead fire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Well then deal with them quickly, we shall. Oh, there's our pet. Let's take a look there. A little sloop, lost and alone in the storm. It's funny how you say that, because what I see is a bigger ship to transfer my flag to. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. That was my line. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. The captain shrugs in the sheeting rain before pinning you with a slow, murderous grin. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'd be quick. Let's see. Well. Attack, fire all cannons, aim at the mouthy one. Sounds like the perfect response. Now nah, you're getting it. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he addresses his crew. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Oh. Well, sorry about your crew, and I'm really sorry you won't be sticking around to be smeared across the deck. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. Sir, if they're dead, are they really prisoners? Or are they just sort of meat sacks that we've brought you for nefarious purposes? You had bandwidth after us! Combat introduction! Characters with a red selection circle are hostile to you. To attack an enemy with your currently equipped weapon, click their selection circle. You can also select the swordy button in the lower center of your screen to put the cursor into the attack state. This will allow you to attack anyone, even friendly characters. Oh, ho, 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 game after my own heart. Hi there. Who do we have here? We have control over exactly ourselves. Well, you can't win them all. Defend the ship! Yes, do what he said. Oh, the better one's leaving. On the plus side, we're going to get loot. Um, oh, I guess we couldn't reach that guy. You there. Storm's picking up. 
Take cover. But loot. Can we take cover after loot? No, no, we can't. You've defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiance crew hurries to reduce sail and batten down the hatches. They work quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Just then, a loose crate tumbles towards you, gathering speed on the rain slick deck. It misses you, but knocks Ch Tupac, one of your deckhands, off his feet. The defiant heaves. Chitupek pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runaway crate totters on the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front and realize it likely contains the salvage from Cad Nua, your keep. Ah, well, I guess we'd better rescue Chitupek. We can throw him over the side to salvage the crate. You grab Chitupek's arm just as his grip fails. For a tense moment, he hangs suspended over the rolling sea. Then, with a mighty tug, you pull him back onto the deck. You hear a splash. The crate from Cad Nua is gone. Chitupek, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline and Eothas striding into the distance. The lookout barely has time to shout a warning before the Defiant runs aground. The impact hurls you from the deck and into a froth of waves, bodies, and splintering debris. You struggle toward the beach just ahead, even as the surf tugs you toward the open sea. You kick and paddle with all your might until at last you feel sand between your fingers. Pulling yourself ashore, you collapse. New quest, Stranded, to seek out a means of repairing your ship. Where's Ch Tupac? We can... You've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. Patch a hole I with him. I woke you, but she looks so peaceful with your face in the sand. Adair runs his fingers through his hair and removes a strand of seaweed he finds lodged there. He examines it closely, then tosses it onto the sand. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. He points out the Defiant, despite it being difficult to miss from your vantage point. So far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. Adair nods towards something further up the beach. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Your steward appears to be lodged between some rocks. Despite this, her tone is warmly cheerful. Where are oh, we? Oh no, but it's real pretty. Difficult to say for certain. The dead fire is spotted with islands, some quite small. The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. Hence that little visit from that wretched pirate captain. All right, well, can we patch the ship up? I'm afraid I won't be much assistance in that regard. And not to doubt Master Adair's capacity, but even he would need supplies. Peasants. That's true. Steak, especially. Well, there's some prime meat lying on the beach, Sunshine. Get your knife out. Patching the hull is only the start. You're going to need help getting the Defiant out to sea again. And a crew, for that matter. Again, I see bodies on the beach. What, nobody knows necromancy? Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. Oh, you guys are just full of complaints. I don't want to be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. We can string together the bodies. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. Okay. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? Well... My soul passed into the beyond, and Bareth gave me a choice. Find Eothas or die. These gods. You make one deal with them to stop a madman, and the next thing you know, they're threatening your soul. That isn't much of a choice. 
But castle or no castle, you are still my lord, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. I appreciate your loyalty. Let's see what we have here. Quest journal. Oh, it went away. Well, Can't take me anywhere. I suppose we better get a move on. Let's roll. Choose the single class or multi class for this companion. All right, let's see here. First, we're going to take a look at quest journal. As you receive quests, your journal will update with relevant information. If you are ever stuck, open it to review your notes by pressing the, um, whatever that symbol is. Oh, I think it's like a quill over paper button in the lower center of the screen or the J key. And some of the quests you receive may be challenging until your character has achieved a higher level. A quest that is beyond your character's current level will be marked in your journal with one, two, or three skulls, one for every level. If a quest is more than three levels above your character's current level, then the skulls will appear red, and so shortly shall you. Continue. Selecting characters. View. To select a party member, click on their selection circle, their portrait, or press the number button that corresponds to their position in the party starting with one at the left. To select multiple party members, click and hold anywhere on the screen and drag the marquee over the circles of the party members you'd like to include. To select the entire party, press the um, finger in the segmented box button in the lower center of the screen or the backspace key. Let's see. Oh, well, this choice cannot be changed later. That's interesting that you would have to choose right now. As I recall, as I recall back in my old D&D &D days, you could level up to a certain point and then you could choose whether or not you wanted to multi-class. Of course, you could only do that if you were of certain races. And at that point in time, paladins could only be human. So I guess I'm just a product of an age gone by. Let's say we've got one fighter already. Oh, why don't we try Swashbuckler? You look like a Swashbuckler, Dare. Or at least you do now. Hmm. Alright, guys. Let's check the bodies. Right. Uh, we could both go. You know, it's there's, there's no shame in going together. Corpse has a wand, a minor potion of healing, and ten copper panned. And here is... A geist of some Hope sort. Hope the rest of those sodden bastards made it. Okay. And you are? Unnamed. I've got it. Okay. Nine copper panned and an ale. Well, I don't have a steak, but okay. I have an ale. And we just cannot travel together, because if we did, it would look so weird to the corpses. Small shield. One-handed, small shield, deflection four, we'll take that. You know what we could do with that is slide that right on over here with our, apparently, no, we, we apparently can't. I wonder why. Maybe I need to have some basic level of proficiency with a shield before I can equip one. Well, there were more bodies in the other direction. Let's let's go for what we can see first. And then we will pillage the coastline. Help! Somebody! Per con Blanca! Um Well, I'd love to help you, but there's a dagger on this corpse. And I have no idea who you are or where you are. And, you know, effort. Um well, here's a thing, guys. That's blue. Oh, hey, there's somebody up there. Um, here's the thing. The Defiant is looking far worse for wear after its unexpected landfall. The hull has splintered in several places along the keel, while the tattered sails stand as evidence of your battle with the pirates. The deck of the Defiant is well out of reach from here. The ship groans like a beached whale each time the waves roll in, but it doesn't seem to be listing further. 
you may be able to climb up. Scale the hull by hand. Yes, do that. I don't know what that means. Success! You nimbly climb up the side of the ship and reach the top without so much as breaking a sweat. The dare is not far behind, pulling himself up and over the railing beside you. That was cool. All right, let's see if we can help Irena there. Hello, Irena. You're looking better, Casita. That or I'm worse off than I thought. <laughs> or a little from column A and a little from column B. The sheen of sweat on her brow and the wan cast to her features belies Irena's casual greeting. It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Irena's leg bears a bloody gouge along the length of her shin and the swelling around her knee suggests a nasty break. Okay, craft a splint from some debris. I'll patch you up as best as I can, but you want to stay off this leg as much as possible. I wasn't planning on going for a run, Casita. Irena watches you work with obvious relief. Once you're through, she gives the leg a tentative stretch. Ah, it still hurts, but I can manage from here. Agrasima. Have you found any of the others yet? Not yet. I'll start a fire. If any of the others are out there, hopefully they'll see it and turn up. Okay, but just a suggestion, don't use the ship as your kindling or source of fuel. Okay. Now, I don't think we can go anywhere else, but we can use this probably the way down. From the prow, the sandbar below seems deceptively close. Climb down. And there we are. Oh, there's our little translucent space pig. And another body. Which has a leather armor and a principi hat. Or a very colorful egg, one of the two. Now, I can't wear a hat, but... But... You would look dashing. Oh, I'm disappointed. It's not that shade of blue. All right, anyway. You're very swashbucklingly buckled. All right, so. Huh? Sure. Grabbing everyone one more time. Uh oh. Suey. Suey. Yes, of course. Combat attack results. All characters in the game have four defenses against attacks, deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. These defenses are based on their attributes, level, items, and other effects. The more powerful the character, the higher their defenses will be, and the harder they will be to hit or affect with abilities. The attack roll is a random number between 1 and 100, to which is added the difference between the attack's accuracy and the targeted defense. If accuracy is less than defense, the attack roll suffers a penalty. If accuracy is greater than the defense, the attack roll gains a bonus. A higher final attack roll is always better. 0 through 24 equals a miss, 24 through 49 equals a graze, 50 through 99 equals a hit, 100 plus equals a crit. A miss has no effect, a hit has the standard listed effect, a graze does less damage and has a shorter duration for effects, a crit does more damage and has higher penetration and a longer duration for effects. Okay, well, we're gonna get us a young boar. Got my meat tenderizer. Who's up for bacon? And we have pork, ship crew morale plus one effects plus two might, and a tusk. The yellowed tusk of an adult wild boar. Huh? Ingredients view. You have found an ingredient. Ingredients can be used to enchant unique weapons, armor, and shields, as well as to craft food, scrolls, potions, and other items. Select the mortar and pestle in the party stash to view your ingredients. Yeah. But, oh, well, there's that. Cool. Drugs, explosives, food, food. Incredible, positive food, very positive. Um, hmm. 
Uh, potions, antidote, potions, defensive, potions, healing, potions, offensive, scrolls, elemental damage, scrolls, general offense. These are often printed with curse words. Scrolls, healing, and support, and scrolls, physical damage. Yeah, right. Watcher, over here. Okay. Gruff speaking, Chiputek, Chitupek, whoever you are, dude who fell over the ship. It is good to see you well, Watcher. I believe the boars were hoping for easy meat. Chitupek greets you with a relieved nod and checks the pistol at his hip. Thanks for not using that, Chitupek. Glad I saved you. The bosun, Beodal, is in that cave over there. Ran in after a boar. Stubborn old dwarf. And you're out here why? I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell. For a time, at least. By the time I was through, I had lost sight of Beodal. Okay. I remained here, hoping he would return quickly. He has not. I'll go look for Beodal. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. Will do. I love being promoted to captain right after death. We come back to the world. The world is your oyster, and we have blood moss. So, cave. Here we go, sea cave. In we go. Velario's Rest. Well, that's where we came from. Okay. Stealth view. Press the masked face button in the lower center of the screen. Hold on one minute. Or use the alt key to have the selected characters enter or exit stealth. I think we may have to draw this episode to close sooner than usual. Having a little bit of trouble talking. All right, continue. And there we are. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting we're boardwalk. To head this way. Crate with a torch, bronze Han, Mariner's porridge, and hardtack, all of which I'm sure are perfectly good and healthy to eat. Pox cap for all your pox cap needs. Wait, look there. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Stealth detection. That's interesting. I like that cone. When a character in stealth enters the hearing radius or vision cone of a bystander, the bystander will start to detect them. The rate of detection is determined by the character's stealth skill and the level of the bystander, and it is faster in the vision cone than in the hearing radius. You can hover your cursor over any character while in stealth to see their hearing radius and vision cone. Some items, such as noisemakers, can be used to distract and move bystanders while you explore in stealth. Very cool. Down. All that being said, let's get him. Um. Let's go. Yeah. Take him down. Down goes all. Loot, no loot, no loot on the beetle. Well, beetle, you need a better paying job. Okay, back, back, back. What do we have here? A skeleton. He's immune to poison. That's crazy talk. Well, there's somebody on the ground, but it doesn't look like a dwarf. Let's head this way for right now. What am I saying? I've got a giant two-handed morning star. Time to... I was hoping we could get behind him. Tutorials Abilities. Each character has their own ability bar that holds all of their active abilities, including spells, powers, invocations, etc. To use an ability, click it. 
some abilities automatically target the user, but most require you to specify a target by clicking on it. Some abilities target an area of effect. The most common area of effect is a circle. If your area of effect is displayed as two circles, one larger than the other, friendly characters caught in the margin between the circles will never be harmed by it. It is always a safe zone. Most abilities draw power from a resource unique to each character class. Barbarian, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, and Rogue abilities draw from a pool that is full at the start of every combat. Each ability subtracts a cost from that resource until it is entirely exhausted. Unlike Barbarians and Fighters, Druids and Priests and Wizards do not have a common resource pool for all of their abilities. Instead, in each fight they can cast a number of spells from each spell level they have access to. Chanters, Cyphers, and Monks start with a fraction of their total resource pool and must build it up over time in each fight. Each class gains their resource in a different way. Unlike all other cast classes, they can continue to replenish their resources throughout a fight. Okay, well, time to take some splinters. About like that. And earn ourselves a Warhammer and a Medium Heater Shield. Now, I know I tried with the other shield, but... Oh, wait, wait, this. Wrong feller. Well, okay, that shield went, but this shield didn't. Okay, there's something, something about this particular shield. Okay. And what is this? It's water. Small farms, forms dart swiftly between the coral below. Forms perhaps known as fish. Oh, Keep we're, it down. we were whoa, whoa, practicing look. our stealth. All right, well, let's make some more splinters. Okay. Let's go. Splinters made. Engagement. One of your characters has been engaged in melee. If an engaged character moves away from the character engaging them, they will provoke a disengagement attack. An interrupt, such as the fighter's knockdown, can break engagement to allow a safe exit. Some abilities, such as the rogue's escape, allows a character to get away without provoking a disengagement attack. And... This time, a saber and a medium shield. Now, let's check a dare here. 17 to 24. 17 to 24. Deflection 8, accuracy minus 4. Same basic thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I am... Well, we are going to finish this fight, and I think we're going to finish this episode. So, let's down. roll. Oh, now? Was that very nice? Sure. Come on. Splinters. Remember the splinters. Okay, well done. And... Earning us two pistols and two more medium heater shields. All right, and looking around, we have a chest. Well, let's see. We went swashbuckler on a dare here. here. Lock difficulty two. Well, I guess we can try it. Well, that's not nice. Well, as long as I don't get caught. Um. Okay, I am actually not sure how I would attempt to lock pick it. It did say we had lock picks, right? All right. Either way. Let's check this body here. Aha! Three lockpicks, a golden sewell, and a waterlogged note. Right-click for details. 
Still no sign of Benwith. How much longer are we going to wait? The wet's already ruined half our take. And get your stinking construct under control. It's been hanging out by that crystal. I swear it's been giving me the eye. All right, I'm starting to have trouble breathing. Maybe allergies. So we're going to stop our episode here. I would like to say thank you for watching. Let me know if you want to see more of this. Otherwise, we'll go maybe five, ten episodes and then we'll draw to a close. All right. As I said, I would like to thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe just a little informative. I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and share if you so desire, and to ask you, above all, mm -hmm. to please sure. take care.